Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. So let's talk about my spiritual day today. I am wrapping up my day 33 Marian Consecration by St. Louis de Montfort. It has been okay. (laughs) You remember if you've been following me for a while last year, I couldn't say enough about it. I was so intense about it, but I also didn't continue on with the devotions. I mean, part of being devoted to Mary is truly devoting yourself to Mary, praying those prayers on a regular basis, initiating yourself into the brown scapular. I don't know if any of you have that currently around your neck, but you can have a scapular And you can have a priest say a special blessing over it and then wear it all the time. I don't shower with mine. And for a while there, it came off when I took off my sweatshirt and it was a few months. I kept thinking, oh, I got to find that. I got to find, or I got to go in my other drawer. I had more. Why didn't I put them on? Was that evil? I don't know. I really didn't give that any thought other than... God speaking through my husband who said, how come you're not wearing that scapular? Like he thinks it's the bone scapula. That's what he said. (laughs) The scapula. And I'm like, oh, it's called scapular. Regardless, that was God or Mary speaking through my husband. So I went and I dug one out of my drawer and I put it right back on. I don't wear it like a superstitious necklace. Uh, especially now that I've been going through the St. Louis de Montfort reconsecration, I'm now happy to say it's me dedicating myself to Mary, consecrating myself to her heart so that she can continue to give me to Jesus. That is what I will explain the brown scapular to be. All right. I'm going to go to confession tomorrow and I will say my final consecration prayers, but I'm going to continue to pray all of the prayers. Now I got up this morning, 4.45, I was like, nope, I got to sleep a little bit longer. So I thought that if I closed my eyes, maybe a half hour would go by, but an hour went by. So I definitely got up at 5.45 went through every single prayer and my Bible of the year and read the readings for today, did a little mental prayer, and I just felt like I wanted to talk about family. But I do have to say that I was not that engaged. I kept nodding off. That's a note to myself. If you're in prayer and you're nodding off, You're in too comfortable of a position. I wasn't laying down totally vertical or horizontal, sorry, wrong direction, (laughs) but I was comfortable. That's why when you go to your prayer place, your sacred space, your Christ corner, you've got to make it comfortable, but not where you're going to fall asleep. And my eyes were so heavy. I was paying attention. I was doing my butt. Be aware, understand, take action. So I cast away the spirit of fatigue. I mean, when I say my eyes were so heavy, I was praying with my eyes closed. Maybe that's why I was dozing off. Because my eyes felt like they had little weights on them. 
And that's not normal. So that's why I started casting them out. And I, and the, okay, check this out. As I am casting out fatigue, laziness, I even said heavy eyes. I don't know if that's a spirit or not. Sometimes I just say things because it's what I'm feeling. And my eyelids started lifting automatically. How crazy is that? The sun was kind of coming in through my eyes. I mean, I was not intentionally opening them. They just lifted on their own. How amazing. Then I asked God to fill me with his zeal, his clarity, his piety, his purity, his prayer. And the rest of the prayer was a lot better. But I didn't catch it until halfway through because I wasn't paying attention. I was falling into my lower faculties and what Satan wanted me to do, which was go back to sleep, even though I fought it. So God, after all of this, says, good and faithful servant, pats me on the head and is happy that I stuck with it, that I didn't fall asleep, that I didn't say that I will pray later, that I continued on with my commitment. And that is a good prayer. I may not think it is. I may not be that happy with it, but I know that God is, and that is really all that matters. So I'm day four of the Bible in a year. Last time I did the Bible in a year, not every day. So I'd listen to a couple on one day, and then I'd let a few days go by. And then I'd listen to maybe five or six because I'd be cleaning the house and it would be what I would be listening to. And then I'd take some time away. But this time, I'm making it a part of my prayer morning. So I'm reading the daily readings. I'm getting scripture there. But I'm also refreshing myself and learning new things because I'm going to tell you I don't know all of the Old Testament. I should, but I don't. You remember how I always tell you we all should be making sure that we know the Bible and the stories in the Bible so that we can share those stories instead of ours if we don't have one personally, so that it can be that emotional reception from that person's point of view that maybe a mirror neuron lights up And they decide, wow, that was intense. I don't want that to happen to me. Well, I'm on day four. And I got to say, every family is broken. Yours, mine, the one we grew up in, the one we have now. And if you're single, your family could be your friends, your coworkers, I mean, we can extend the family out into a couple of different definitions, but I'm really just looking at the family that we were raised in or the family that we have now as adults. From the very beginning with Adam and Eve, (laughs) we're broken. And you can see from Cain and Abel, there is a distinct difference There is an evil bloodline, and there is a holy, God-fearing bloodline. You and I are adopted into that bloodline. And there are people who live and were raised in evil, in destroying people, not having a conscience, not having compassion or love. They destroy God's creation and enjoy it. They love to do the opposite of what God wants us to do. So they hate humanity. They hate God's creation. They don't have a sense of humor. They don't have a sense of respect or love or appreciation for anything, period. And Exactly the opposite. Their intent is to destroy God's creation, humanity in particular, by getting them to sin. You know the strategies of the devil. There are two. Getting us to sin and ruining our relationships. 
getting us to sin and ruining our relationships, which goes back to the family. Okay, so Noah, he's the only one. God is looking at how evil everyone is in the world, except for Noah. Tells Noah to build the boat, get all the animals and birds and creepy crawly things in it, and then 40 days, and then a month, and then 10 months, and finally, finally, they can get out of the boat. And then he tills the soil, Noah, and he makes grapes. And then he gets drunk on the wine, and he is in his tent naked. I'm serious. I do not know how the words Ham seeing his father naked and then went out and told his brothers, who then came in with a blanket over their shoulder with their face facing away. They walked in backwards and covered their father, never looking at him at all, being pure and respectful of dad. But not ham, ham, and ham. So this is what Father Mike says. According to the theologians, what had happened was Ham saw what happened and took dominion over him and laid with his mother. Do y'all know where the phrase Emmer Effer came from? This. This is how distorted and perverted evil is. Having sex within a family, a son and a mother? Don't ever use that word. Please shouldn't use that other, the one that ends, mother is fine by itself. <laughs> don't use M or F or ever, and don't use the F anyway. Gosh, if that is still in your life, please clean it up. You are absolutely not being a witness of God. If you are still swearing, I'm telling you, you've got to clean that up. Jesus didn't swear. None of his Followers swore. I remember someone saying once, people who use profanity don't have a vocabulary. They're not very smart. And I heard that and I was like, I take exception to that. You know, like I'm not that. I'm smart. Not. <laughs> okay. So our relationships, that is what Satan goes after. So I want you to realize that there are evil people out there who do not care about us, who actually want to hurt us, number one. It's real. It's been there from the beginning. Number two, we're adopted as children of God. So it's our job, responsibility, duty. We're commanded to love ourselves and love our neighbors, and our neighbors are in our own home. And this is where I say we can have the most impact is right where we live. With our children, with our spouse, if we're single, with our friends, with our coworkers, our, our existing family. We need to change. We need to be that witness and love and accept people doesn't mean that we accept and forget about the sin or the behavior or the hurt that might have been caused to us by those people in our families or caused to themselves. But we walk through it with Mary and Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God the Father, and we ask our guardian angel to change our hearts. It's possible the Holy Spirit is here to work on our memory. It's possible to reflect on something and have it be completely different than what it was when it happened. Because God's going to open our hearts to the true brokenness. And that some people fall for the evil one's ploys and tactics in the world. They believe <laughs> what Satan says. They believe that we 
should be doing these things that the world says we should be doing. And I, you know, we all know the list, all the sins and all the selfishness. I want to remind us, these may, might be the three things that we can leave with. So we always pray this every rosary to increase our faith, our hope, and our love or charity. I like the word love. So the opposite of faith is doubt. The opposite of hope is despair. And this is a big one because a lot of you are probably thinking the opposite of love is hate. And that's not it. The opposite of love is selfishness, narcissism, being all about yourself. The world revolves around you. What we have to remember is that love is sacrificial. True love requires us to give up a little bit of ourselves, to not always get what we want, to do things that we don't want to do for somebody else. It's a sacrifice. And then the more we sacrifice for that person, the more that person appreciates it, and then they're going to sacrifice back to us. And then love begets love. And then your family's brokenness is being healed because you're doing things for people. You're saying things to people. You're praying. You're offering up these sacrifices. And you can feel the spirit in your family change. Your family dynamic can and will change. How do I know this? Because it's happened in my own family. Because of the things that God was doing in my life, my family barely swears around me. <laughs> when they say JC out loud, because my dad does that sometimes, I look at him immediately. That's the one that I really have a problem with. I don't get on their case with the other things that they say, like the F-bomb. But I am going to tell them about the Emmer Effer and the biblical story there that they may not know. Ooh, that was my ankle. <laughs> okay, let's get on with our day and pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, you can change our families. I've seen it. I want to thank you because my family is so much kinder. My brother has found God, you, Lord. Through this walk, my father is praying. My mother is back in the church. So much has happened because you, Lord, pulled me out of the pits of hell. And I just said yes. So for everyone who's listening to this right now, we all implore, we beg, we beseech you, we are lamenting for your healing in our families, for any heartbreak or sadness or anger to be mended so that we can reflect and know that we're all broken. We're all seeking your healing. And so what we need to do is accept everything as it is and love people where they're at no matter what. Forget the debt that they owe us is what you say is forgiveness. You will take care of changing our memory. You will take care of changing our heart for that person. As long as every day we let go of that debt that we think they owe us. And then we give it to you. Lord, we give everything to you. You live in us, through us, and with us. Help us to die to ourselves, to our desires, and our selfish needs, so that we can better know you, love you, and serve you in this life and in the next. Mary, please, with the Holy Spirit within us, your beloved spouse, you are filled with God. There is no more Mary. 
we ask that you help us to be filled fully and to die of ourselves fast. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm looking forward to the next day of the Bible. Remember, I said once that Father Simon, he's a friend on Relevant Radio, he said that the Bible is the best soap opera ever. And it's true. If you started the Bible in a year, which you can get anywhere, just search it anywhere online and it can come up in all these different podcast things. You can download an app from Ascension. You can listen to it anywhere. I'm excited to take every day as it comes, not jamming in seven days at once, just taking time to reflect. And reflect on the case that, yes, there are evil people whose purpose, whose only reason for living is to tear souls down through sin, destroy relationships, and pull as many people into hell as possible, let alone killing them all. Let's look at how many millions of babies have been ritualistically, satanically sacrificed, because that is what abortion is. Look at all the destruction that is happening out there with the jab. If you have taken it, it's okay, because I get how some people were so scared, but that's why we've got to be living in faith, faith, not fear. We should never be afraid. That is why the Lord says it over 365 times in the Bible. If you did happen to take the jab and now you regret it, or you're looking at all of these illnesses that are coming up as a result, you've got to remember people in power at the top of the top, I'm not talking about Joe, who happens to work in one of the labs that created the vaccine. He may not be evil himself. He's just working to pay his bills for his family. But I can guarantee you, the people at the top are. So we have to remember that no, not all of these people in power care about us. Quite the opposite. Many, many more of that population, not 100%, but a vast majority hate us, want to do damage to us. Look at what's happening with AI. Look at what's happening with our farmers. Look at what's happening with our food and our companies that are making the food. Do you know we only have two pork places. One is Smithfield. One is something else. And by the way, Smithfield Smithfield is China owned. But again, I believe God is just showing us the truth. And sometimes we have to learn the hard way. So for those of you out there who, I don't even know why I'm going off on this vaccine thing, but I'm just trying to show, show the fact that people are evil. And that these establishment organizations, including universities, Hollywood, the sports organizations, corporations, look at all the wokeness. Look at what is happening even in the hospitals with what they're doing and allowing for children for the money. If you've seen my videos, I've put clips out there where they are sitting in their own auditoriums. Matt Walsh did this. It was on their own website. It wasn't even like someone was taking a sneaky little video in the auditorium listening to the top echelon of that particular hospital say, look, the more kids we can bring in and do top and bottom surgeries, we bring in fifty to $60,000 for this hospital. So let's do as many of these as we can. It has nothing to do with 
helping the children, as they say, they are destroying the children so that they cannot make babies. Again, destroying God's creation. All for what? Money. I'm sure you've heard hospitals received $49,000 for every COVID death, even if you died with a motorcycle accident. We've got to get over the fact that people, some, are pure evil and have been raised that way and are the father of lies too. They look at us in our faces and lie to us. That's the news. And they do it with emotion so that we can believe with emotion. They know how mirror neurons work. And so should we. Okay, wow, it's getting long. All over the map here. But families are filled with people. People have problems. Some go to Jesus. Some do not. What we need to do is bring Jesus into our heart, bring Mary into our soul, ask her to help us love like Jesus does and love like she does and be mild and meek, yet strong and firm. And they will guide us. All right, go out there and be loved today, especially to your family. Find something more with, <laughs> I was like, how do I end this? <laughs> what do I usually say to end this? Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body. Oh, and have a blessed and inspired day. So it's 844 Central Time in an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to be online live on YouTube. So let me wrap this up and get it published so this can get out there and maybe I will see you in a bit. And we are going to talk about weight gain, hot flashes. Do you have no energy? Are you losing your hair? Do you have memory loss? Do you have like all of these issues? Are you achy? <laughs> Do you have pains? Like, it doesn't have to be that way. So that's what I'm going to talk about in about an hour and 15 minutes on my YouTube channel. So go check it out. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday. So remember this weekend, try it. Just try to be love in a new way to your family. And watch your family spirit change. Because when people do something good for you, or nice for you, or something that you know, oh my gosh, like, he just made me dinner. Like, he doesn't make dinner. I make dinner. Thank you so much. It's a selfless act, and it's something that we receive. Hopefully, we receive it in love, and we don't start backseat cooking and telling him or her how to do things. But in the end, when we receive those types of things, it warms our heart and we want to do the same back for that person, even though that's not why we should do things, by the way. God knows your heart. <laughs> if you're doing something just because you want something back, that's not a pure heart. So do it for the purpose of love. And I'm telling you, they're going to do something for the purpose of love. And then it snowballs and watch it because it happens. I've lived it. In my own family, currently, my present family that I've started with my husband and in the family that I was born in, God can do amazing things. Have a blessed and inspired day.